Adam McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald on YouTube. Please subscribe, like, tell a friend, share, send with the link, call a friend, tell someone at Target. Just watch and let me know that this is all worth my while. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, I have a great treat for you. Um, We went out and got some Greek food and took a water break and Chris agreed to stay. Thank so you. today's show is another full packed, hot topic, juicy shows. A little bit of a year end recap. Oh, that's I, I, as much as we can get through. I forget. You know, these days it's hard to remember what year was what. Me too. Yeah. So I don't remember what this. I you told me last night we would do a little year end recap, and I was trying to think of what stories. I were don't even remember. This year it's all like, blur. You know, it's just yeah. all. It's all a blur. Well, we'll go through some stuff, and towards the end, maybe we'll have a better clarity. Okay. All right. Um, first of all, you told me something I was not made aware of. Yeah. That the three of us were featured on TMZ Celebrity Christmas Trees 2021. Yes. This is a very cute photo. It's a very cute photo. It was at the Sarah Colonna Christmas party. Yeah. Uh, however, not all of us are featured. If you notice at the bottom, it's just your name. We're just friends. Whoa. Yeah. And I, that's not This makes it even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Oh my God. Um, okay. Yeah, it's just that. And you were actually featured twice on Celebrity Christmas Trees. I scrolled through. I have to tell you, and now listen, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm about as up as I can be on pop culture stuff and yes. celebrity stuff. I was thumbing through Celebrity Christmas Trees. I didn't know any of the people. Not taking anything away from us. Well, basically, you are taking it away from yeah, me. I'm not. You popped up twice. Not only in this one with me. Slow day. You popped up in yeah. another one in front of your Christmas tree. Wow. Or a Christmas tree. I don't know. Do you was. recall what I was wearing? Uh, it looked like silvery, I believe. Silvery, like a not not a not a two piece thing. If, if I'm not mistaken, I'm sure. I don't know. I think that might have been. Was that maybe Josh Flagg's Christmas party? It might have been Josh. Well, Flagg's good because we're going to talk about Josh Flagg. Really a very nice tree. Josh Flagg has a new show out called Josh and Josh. Right. It's like a spinoff from Million Dollar Listing and it's Josh Altman and Josh Flagg. Uh And last night was the first episode or this week was the first episode and I watched it and he has a therapy session with Dr. Drew, him and Josh Altman and he goes, I met Dr. Drew through some mutual friends. We ended up on a trip to Mexico together. Yeah. Oh, he didn't even mention you? No. It's kind of like me on the TMZ Christmas tree. And then he shows the photos, and I, I'm i not blurred out, and neither is Dr. Drew and his wife, Susan, and Josh is not blurred out, but Sarah's blurred out, her husband, John, is blurred out, my husband, Peter, is blurred out, yeah. your wife, Liz, and you. Right. So I texted Josh Flagg. Okay. And I'm like, watching the show... First of all, I wrote him, watching the show, when can you and Josh Altman and your husband Bobby come on Juicy Scoop? I watch a little more and I see this. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, what the fuck? I don't, I don't know if I want you on my show anymore. You didn't even mention, okay? I'm fine that you friend poached Dr. Drew. It, but you're on a TV it, it, show. It was a bit of a friend poach, right? A hundred percent, except he's been classy enough to not do anything with Dr. Drew Without inviting me. Oh, that's So good. after they did the therapy session on the show, I was there at the tail end and joined them for a free dinner. Yeah. So he knows how to keep the friendship. Right, I'm not right. mad. But I called him. He just landed in Hawaii. Oh, he was going to Hawaii for five days, and then Bobby's meeting him five days later. And I go, why is Bobby meeting you five days later? He's like, because my parents were supposed to come, but their flight got canceled, and they saw, they saw it as a sign to cancel the whole trip. Wow. So now Josh Flagg is just alone in Maui for yeah. five days by himself. Oh. So for like about three minutes, I thought about flying out there and joining yeah. him. Yeah. Sounds nice. But I would have to share a bed with him. Oh, well, you could do that. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I just like to read and like watch TV when I want to watch TV. Yeah. It's not even about the sex thing. It's just like, yeah. let me just have my alone time. That's why I don't stay at anyone else's house. I'm always like, yes, my you brother, can't get your coffee. You I can't. know. I don't want to have to ask to get an apple. You know, like, yeah, these, it's, these? it's mostly the coffee. Everything. It's always about the coffee. I think it's about the bathroom. Mine's the bathroom. Can I make a suggestion to anybody that really wants people to stay at their home? Yeah. Get a Keurig 
for the guest bedroom. Okay. Make sure there's plenty of water and a, like a little, just a mini Keurig and like cream or whatever they need in the morning. Okay. Just be like as early as you wake, especially if you're a late, if you're an early person, fine. Yeah. But if you're like a later riser, it just make that person feel so comfortable and just be like, here's some, a bunch of water, have your coffee. Yeah. Feel free to walk around. Call. But if you want to just have your coffee alone in your room, like you would at a hotel. Right. And- also, can I just add, if you have, if the room or the house has any quirks, which every house does, we right? Their house, all, you got to, you know, jiggle the the handle on the toilet or yes. whatever. Let a, let people know because there's nothing. Wait, I have, you know, then overflowing a toilet. I have or, horrible news for you. Oh no! At the Christmas party, I, I, this is what I'm getting. Peter at. again fucked up Sarah's toilet again. She wrote me the next day. Shut up. Yes. What did she say? She said Peter clogged the toilet again. <laughs> Second, he's been there twice. Get Peter. Peter. And he's clogged the he toilet around? I'm going to get Annie to bring Peter in because when he told me this, yeah. I was like, Peter, yeah. how could you let this happen yeah. a second time? And I go, were you literally mm -hmm. saving your dumps for Sherman Oaks? <laughs> he seems like, to be. What the hell? Yeah. Peter. And then he goes, no, John said it's the, it's the toilet's fault. I'm like, well, of course. He's a classy yeah. Canadian. Yeah. Well, yeah. But they are saying – they're texting me and saying that Peter clogged the toilet again, second time. So second I, time whether, in a row. In a I row. I need to tell you something. Yeah. I'm on a boat. I am experienced at, to at using a very – Horrible toilet, right? Because you got to. No one wants to hear this story. I just want the world to know. And then you gotta flush go. You wipe goodbye. It, goodbye. Which is exactly what goodbye. I okay. This is the part okay. where I have to oh, tell I Sarah: see. See. never yeah. be afraid to invite me alone. Okay. I just don't want to be left out. Yeah. Because my plus one is a plus two. No. <laughs> <laughs> number two. <laughs> my plus one is a number two. Yeah. Yeah. So oh my god. House triggers me. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like Heather. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. He told me after we got home and I was like, "Please tell me you're joking. Please no, tell me it's you're out joking." There. Well, it's out there now. It's out there. Yeah. So, uh you know, but they were they were happy that he didn't lay on the couch again. Cuz remember the last time yeah, he, he clogged the toilet and then laid on the couch so nobody well, else could see. Well, he was sit. exhausted yeah. after that. <laughs> that way like out. a baby. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, so but anyway, you know, I called Josh Flagg. Okay. And we we're talking on the phone. And I'm like, what? He goes, what, what are you talking about? I go, D did you not watch the episode? I'm like, they blurred out all of our faces. I'm like, why Why is the production team so lazy that they wouldn't get a release? I go, you're, a, you're with celebrities. Right. Why not show the celebrity faces? And I'm like, and if all you had to do was text me and go, hey, or the person – can we get these people to sign a release? Right. I mean, television personalities, NFL player. But wait a minute. If they didn't get you to sign a release, why is your face not blurred out? I guess he just knows I want to still go to parties and right. I'd be, I'm not going to go after him. Yeah. But I never signed a release. I wouldn't have gone after him either. He could have used my likeness. But there was two pictures, by the way. Did you, there, was there was another, another one picture where your which, face was blurred. And Sarah's wasn't. Yeah, Sarah's wasn't. That's right. Yeah, so I'm like, this is some yeah. sloppy work. Some sloppy work. Yeah. I'm just saying, I know they had to... Th I mean, the show is fun. Mm -hmm. But the, come on. And anyway, he said, uh, I go, how does that happen? He goes, oh, they're idiots. Whatever. I don't my know. wife will be thrilled that her boobs look big. Her stomach and, looks yeah, flat. Stomach looks but nobody flat. knows who she no, is. No, nobody knows who she is. So she'll be thrilled by that. So yeah, that, that's good. At least we have that going for us. Anyway, let's talk about James Franco. So James Franco. Finally get, broke his silence. So he had this school. And I remember when – Acting school. Acting school. Yeah. I remember when a young person I knew said that she was going there. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was like, mm, acting school. And she's like, he's – you know, oh, it's I'm so excited to do the James Franco acting school. And he's like there all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, really? He's there all the time? Like that seems weird. Yeah. Was... And then, you know, I don't think she stayed that long. I don't, I don't, hopefully nothing happened to her. So several people came out. Two girls sued. He settled with these girls for $2 million. He just did a radio interview where he basically admits that he slept with women, but he said, I never started this acting school to lure in women. Right. And, um, but it was, you know, I, I didn't have good judgment in sleeping with my students who were over 18 because um, 
of alcohol and drug use and sex addiction. He went sex addiction. It's that's a it's, it's the, one of the ones you have to do. You have yeah. to think: Should I go full sex addiction on this apology? Uh, you remember the first sex addiction person? Do you remember who it was? Hold the on. First Hold one, on. Let me the think. The first one who went full sex addiction on their cheat, caught cheating, went sex addiction. I want to say, was it a Halle Berry ex? App, that's who it was. Got it. Was him a good. Halle Berry ex, a real handsome singer. I forget yes. his name. Yeah. Uh, and he was the first one who went uh, sex addiction as an excuse. Uh, it's been used since. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure why everybody caught in a situation like this doesn't use it. Because mm-hmm. I feel like it's one of those ones where you, uh, you can't argue it. You know, it's an addiction like any other. I guess you would say that. I think there are some behavior that I would say is part part of the rehab you should get should include sex addiction. Right. When someone just absolutely cannot put down their phone. They, they need to see porn. They need to get, right. you know, they need to DM someone. Like, like not even a few hours idly can they spend not yeah. pursuing a woman. Right. I do think that's something's wrong, yeah. you know? And um, no excuse as their partner to have put up with it. But, like, I do think there's some – He, but anyway, the girls, the victims said – their attorneys spoke for them and said, you know – he still didn't take, and according to them, they didn't felt he took any real responsibility for the pain that he caused the girls. He basically well, just said, "Well, I did this because yeah. I was, you know." And from what I read, and uh, also, and I'm not excusing James Franco, but whatever, nothing was forceful here. There was nothing, anything like that. They're not mm-hmm. accusing him of that. What they're accusing him of was using his power as an acting teacher, if there's such a thing, so, uh, to influence these girls or you know groom them, or whatever. But I think everyone's of age and all that. So yeah. I'm saying that. Uh, the angle that I'm I'm curious as to why nobody takes, and I, a guy like James Franco at this point, weirdly seems like the career is kind of, I guess it's over. You know, like, what are you going to do now? All his friends, all those guys, Seth Rogans and all the guys he worked with, have just said, we're not going to work with him anymore. You know who also started an acting school? Chewy. That's right. Oh, remember that? Chewy Bravo, who's rest in, long, peace. You know, rest in peace. And so is his acting Chelsea school. Chelsea Laley started an acting school. That lasted about two weeks. Well, I was a lot. Hey, I didn't think it was a good idea. No, because he was wasn't like, an act. And he was a little creepy. Yeah. I mean, he could be a little handsy. Right. And he might not have understood the rules. Yeah. Yeah. He. <laughs> the lights just brightened up. But I'm, I, I look That's fine. Good. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, good with it. Just got some brighter lights in here. I don't yeah. know. Go on. But anyway. Um, yeah. I, the, the, uh, not to, I don't want to be sound, sound insensitive at all, but I'm just curious as to why nobody takes the approach of – like I believe an honest approach to any of these type of apologies, which is, listen, I was a very handsome, successful actor in Los Angeles in an era that wasn't what we're living in now. And I probably made some mistakes. Like, you know, like I don't know why everybody doesn't say that. Like – I think Sounds some to people, me like you have something prepared in case this ever happens. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. 100. Listen, I was, I'm, I'm no different than James Franco during the Chelsea Lately days. I'm wearing the leather jacket. Yeah, I was, I, I, am I, I looking was, at James Franco? You know, <laughs> I was enjoying my Listen, life back then. I don't, absolutely. And I want to be sensitive to anybody that's a, a victim of any kind of – you right. know, coming on to you, anything yeah. that you did not, uh, you know, agree to. But – they, when there is when you're at the top of your game on a show that's super hot, right? I mean, the case of Chris Noth, and I'm not. Oh again, yeah. Again, I'm, I'm. I believe the women, but I also believe that there's probably a lot of women that are not coming forward that ag- agreed to have relationships on with him for just an evening, right? Because it's Mr. Big, and he's charming, and he's sexy, and yeah. I'm down. I actually think I know a few, and yeah. I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, there's – yeah. And so – and that doesn't take away from the girls that did not want this attention right. and got it. But I'm saying, yeah, he was in a position to not have to work very hard That's for what women I'm to want to hang out with him. Right. So – but James Franco included, James, along with Chris Frangiolo. Fr- Chris Frangiolo. Listen, I was, de- I was a wonderful sweetheart of a guy. I'm going to say the the years between 2009 and 2014 were um, good years. Good, yeah. I mean, Chelsea Lately was a fun show to be on, and I I was having a nice. You walked time. into a bar. 
And a couple girls were watching you every night at 11 p.m. I mean, that's why you get into this business, it at was, least. It, so you thought back I then. Mean, you know, it was I think it done. was easier to get female attention during those years than the years of working with Meghan Markle at oh, Maribel. It's true. Absolutely. And you so know, you go to... from working hard, not so hard because yeah. you've always been cute, but you, you work very much. You, having yeah. to put a little more effort forth yeah. to the point of having to put practically no effort forth. Yes. And so I think that's kind of an interesting thing to explore. You that's know? what I'm saying. And, I'm saying. And girls too, like you're sexually free. You're sexually positive. You've already boned 20 guys, yeah. only three that were your boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And now you're at a bar and someone that you watch every night that you think is sexy as hell is giving you attention. Right. And you're like, I don't Wait, care. Wait, is it still me or James Franco? All total- three of you. Okay. <laughs> and you're, and so as the girl, you're like, okay. I cannot wait to tell the story at brunch. That's what I, yeah. I want to fuck him or do whatever with him. I know I'll never hear from him again. I know he's married. Right. I don't want to hang out with this guy who's 20 years older than I am. But I, right. I not you. Oh, sorry. Chris Noth. <laughs> you didn't have to add that part. Chris Noth. Because <laughs> yeah, one okay, of the yes. girls said, like, he was... A lot yeah. older than I would ever be interested in and everything. Well, and I get that all. The standards all change. Just like, just like the girls that sleep with, you know, NBA players that they know are in solid relationships with other people. Yeah. It's a notch on their belt, too. The so, Chris Noth stuff does not surprise me. I mean, as a guy who kind of knew him a little bit, he was a Mirabelle restaurant that I worked at. He, the, his wife was a bartender there. That's where they met. He met her at oh, Mirabelle. really? That's yes. some juicy And they're still too. married. Well, they are still married. I don't ago. know that they had the greatest Christmas. No. But no. Um, they have two kids. I hope it works out. Yeah. He's since been dropped by the agency, dropped by the equalizer. Everything. Obviously, he was already dead on Sex and the City. Um, but he was doing cutesy Peloton commercials. That was d- dropped. Yeah. That was pulled. I, I guess they had a tequila. The, the that three was... girls said something, Sarah, and you know, said, We're, right. we stand with the women. We're really sad, which is the right thing to say. And in their defense... He was probably a total gentleman to them throughout all those years right. of being on this set. That's the thing. You're not trying to bone your co-star. Yeah. You're not. You're no, like, I, the you one know, girl was, ta- I, I read the one girl's story, which sounded very legitimate. I mean, t- yeah. w- and she was a, a stand-in. She was yeah. Kristen Davis' stand-in. And he was, you know, coming on hard. And some of the things he was saying, I'm like, but I, I, the guy was kind of an odd guy. I mean, I could totally see that happening. Yeah. Yeah. He was a strange dude. You've had conversations with him. I mean, I him. went to the parties. Yeah. And I thought he was, I thought he was kind of fun and flirty with me, but yeah. he never, obviously he never tried anything. My husband, Peter was there the whole time. Right. But like when I took a photo with him, it was close and snuggly and I didn't mind it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did well, nothing else happened, you know? So that, for me, my experience was what my experience was. Yeah. It doesn't mean that other people's experiences weren't different. Did you ever take an acting class? Were you ever in an acting class? Yes. I've taken my acting class and I think I've told this story before, but for the new people, I was doing a scene same time next year with this guy Mm -hmm. and the acting teacher stopped the class during our scene, had a talking to alone with my guy, the co-star of the scene. This guy was like a 45 year old man. Okay. Now just for, just for context, what, 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 when is this? What year? This is nine. I'm like 25. Okay. And it's a place on Robertson. Yeah. So these are different times. Yeah. And, he talks to him, and then we do our scene again, and then he and I talk, and we were friendly, but we were not dating or anything. And I go, what did he say to you, like, about when he took you to the side about what's going on in our scene and why he, why the, the coach, acting teacher, doesn't think it's working? And he, he said that, he, the acting teacher said, have you fucked her yet? Oh, yeah. And he goes, no. And he goes, well, that's your problem. Oh my God! See, the scene is about yeah. a couple that meets every year, and they have separate lives, and right. they, there's there is not enough sexual chemistry around uh, uh, between you two. Yeah. The way this scene is going to be better is if you guys have sex by next week, right? Yeah, like one, once again, <laughs> I, I want to, and my, I I actually uh, dropped the class after yeah, that. I'm I not like James Franco off the hook, but every <laughs> acting teacher was a scumbag. Like there's there's that's what it was. Like yeah, and even, like you got into acting class like just to. You get laid. It was like a thing, you know, you picked your scene partner based on, oh, he's a cute girl, he's a cute guy, and then you, you're always rehearsed back at each other's apartments or whatever. Honestly, that's why I pursued stand-up and writing. So because I went to one scumbags. weird 
Yeah. I went to one too many weird converted garages in North Hollywood. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. To, to study scenes? To do scene yeah. study. Oh, my God. With someone who was like too old to be living in a converted yeah. garage <laughs> actor yep. that was kind of hot, oh. but still living in a converted garage. God, I miss those days. And I yeah. remember I just said, and then having to memorize and then having to make the plan of where to meet and drive an hour and a half to yeah. practice this thing so that you have it together by Wednesday night at 730 for the scene study. And are any agents going to come to this night and you can get oh. signed? I was like, yeah. I mean, that's part of the reason. I was, And I remember being at the Growling Summer and one friend who was a good actress and she had been in, got was booking stuff. But she even said, she goes, is there a time when I can just quit acting class? Yeah. Like real acting class. Is there a time? You know, yeah. like, because I just, I don't want to do it anymore. And I just remember we were all like, yeah. Yeah. Because like, you were always in acting class with people. Nobody ever made it. Like you were, like you think of the people you were in your acting class with, or even like I, I was in acting class in New York and there were like older people in the class. I'm like, well, nobody here has done anything. Like, well, the, one, of, all... one of the things that I remember, I said, oh, can you, um, I go, I have a meeting with an agent this week. So can you help me with this monologue or something with the coach? And then the coach is like, well, could we do a scene together and I can come with you so that I can be seen too? Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. The person I'm paying all this money to doesn't have representation right. either? Yeah, exactly. They were all like failing. I mean, the case of James Franco, he was pretty successful. But I knew people who took it, were at his school and they would tell these stories like, oh, he would hit on the girls. Like, well, why do you think James Franco's got an acting class? Like, well, he says that's not why he had an Well, class. that's what he has to say. To yes, try but and... I mean, I remember when this story broke and there was a lot of really disturbing stuff. Of oh, was it? sexual the scenes were. Yeah, I remember he used to make them do sexual. And like, yeah, yeah, like it was a lot. Yeah. Well, anyway, good luck to you. But once again, he was one of those dudes, remember? Hosting the Oscars, Hollywood. Oh my god, sweetheart. that was so bad when he hosted. Remember, the Oscars. Remember, he was like everybody loved him. He was a cute stoner, fun guy, and yeah. guys, just everybody's a, everybody's a scumbag, I guess. In the end, well, Real Housewives of OC is happening, and there was a, a juicy thing that happened. Um, besides these two girls wearing high ponytails, everyone's wearing high ponytails now because it like pulls up your face. Yeah. So you might see a high ponytail next time you come here. Oh really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen I've never seen you ever in a high ponytail. I wow. don't I don't I don't know. I think it, it's just not what I do, but now I'm like, I don't know. But maybe it's a lot of high ponytail. Anyway, these two girls got in a fight. I just want to tell you why. Okay. Because this one, Shannon Bedore, who's blonde, while cameras were filming her, she said, I can't believe that Heather Debro is inviting this new girl, Nicole, who's a new cast member, mm -hmm. to her house. Because I knew Nicole from 20 years ago, and Nicole tried to sue Heather Dubrow's husband, Terry Dubrow, for a bad boob job. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it all comes out, and Heather Dubrow is furious because she's like, without saying we're on a reality show, she's kind of like, Shannon, you put it out there, whether my husband's innocent or not, and the case was settled and dropped, now the world knows that on occasion, my right. husband gets sued as a plastic surgeon, which doesn't look great, even if he's the greatest plastic surgeon on earth. So why yeah. would you put there? So I just want – at the end of this scene, and Heather Dubrow used to be an actress, she gets very serious with her outside and she says, I'm telling you, if you ever come for my family or my husband again, it'll cost you. A lot more than our friendship. Whoa. That is not a threat. Mm hmm That is a promise. Whoa. And so we were watching it last night, and Peter's like, wait, is this for real? And I'm like, well, she is an actress. I definitely think yeah. she knew she was going to talk to her, and she planned out her fucking speech. But the juiciest stuff that's going on with the show. But what was that thing that uh, Tamara oh, wrote Oh, Tamara wrote this. She wrote... Okay, Tamara's no longer friends with the blonde Shannon Bedore. Yeah. Tamara's no longer on the show. So Tamara wrote, alcohol will age you so fast. Weight gain ages you as well. If you don't take care of your body, it shows. So she's talking about... Well, that's what people thought. She since came out and said, no, I was just talking about it in general. Oh. But that's just a fact. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it is, but, you know. It's just kind of weird that yeah. you put it under uh, mm -hmm. two girls and you put it. So she did put that under the picture? Yes. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, that's But she definitely. said, oh, I was responding to somebody else asking me about fitness or something. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. I think she kind of realized that it looked pretty bad. And now, was, yeah. hey, it's, you know, it keeps us talking. Now, this girl, Noella, this is pretty juicy. Being an L.A. person, you have probably heard the ads of Sweet James. Seen the, yeah. The attorney. Uh-huh. I just heard him. He did a full interview um, on Kiss FM. Oh, about, okay. And, you know, so this is his wife, Noella. Which and one? The, this is the, with the dogs? Well, they got in a fight, yes, with the dogs. So her thing is only she and her mom and her two little dogs. She has two kids. She has one daughter from a previous relationship, and that dad won't let that kid be on the show. Okay. And then she and Sweet James and their son were going to be on the show together. But since the show started to air, he was slapped with a tax lien and then also filed divorce from her. And now she says on the show, I haven't gotten one dime from him, nothing. Okay. So now it's just down to just her mother and her two little dogs. He goes on over Christmas. Okay. This happened over Christmas. He starts his own website, different from the law website, to address what's been told on the show. And he basically says that Noella always wanted to be a real housewife. For the last five years, we were looking for houses together for that would be uh, filming approved. And she wanted to give me a child. I never had a child. She went through two rounds of IVF. We found a surrogate in the country of Georgia. Georgia. Exactly. like Well, the Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Who carried our baby. And then we had to go to Georgia and get our son. Yeah. And it was very traumatic and difficult getting him out of the country. Why in California when – I mean, if there I – don't, I don't think there's a better state to have a surrogate situation right. happening. I mean, there's a ton of surrogates here right in California. Why yeah. would you go – Across the world. It's very, very bizarre. Right. And then he says, you know, but I am not here to disparage Noella, anything, but I was a Puritan when I met her, and then we got into sex, drugs, and rock and roll, because she talks about how she's bisexual, and then they have a sex dungeon, and they boned on the first date. Whoa. So he's All like, right. so I really changed who I am, but I wish Noella the best, but I don't recognize who she is anymore. So then she reposts that. And is like, uh, you haven't called me in five months. I've not gotten a dime. You haven't seen your son, all this shit. And then he posts a third one and he's like, oh, I just want you to know Noelle and I are working. Noella and I are working it out. All this is that. And everyone's like, what is happening? Is this to keep him known as Sweet James? Yeah. It doesn't sound so sweet. The personal injury, injury right. attorney or what? But then I Live for Bravo showed – posted this i can see why sweet james says he doesn't recognize noella anymore i'm showing you these five photos of how much noella has changed is that the same person that is the same person oh my god she went from being very blonde and fair with light colored brows to still blondish brown then dark hair and plastic surgery and very dark hair and uh, yeah oh my god that's a different person yeah, in the end, she looks like an, like an Egyptian goddess. Yeah. Yeah. And what do they call that when you do your hair? Like they, they mat it down there so on the front. So we edging? were talking they about call that. that. Edging. So for for predominantly black women, mm-hmm. they when they do pull their hair back and stuff, they take their little baby hairs and they comb them down. They put right. like this like gel on it and it looks really cute. And Kim Kardashian started doing it. But oh, Yeah. It really, I've never seen white women do it uh-huh. until Kim. And now a lot of people are doing it. But she is, her dad was a, a black weatherman. Okay. So now she is all about, I'm the first black real housewife of OC. I really identify with my, you know, being Not black. Not Al, Al Roker, was it? He's, no. a, <laughs> he's the only black weatherman I know. <laughs> I think this one might have been a California oh, local okay. person. Right, right. And, um, so, yeah, she changed her look a lot and, you know, very much playing up yeah. that that side of her. Um, but I thought that was interesting. But, I mean, I don't really know what the goal – people think they're in this together. I, I don't. I think that they're definitely going to stay divorced, and I think he tried to save his reputation. Yeah. And – but, I mean, it was all played out on social media over Christmas, which was very bizarre. But, hey, also on Housewives – 
Megan King Eggman got married to her third husband. Yes. 75 days ago. Or they were married for 75 days. And now he's somehow in uh, Biden, right? So Joe Biden's yeah. sister's son is who she married. Right. And Joe Biden and his wife, first lady, went to the wedding. Yeah. They met on a dating site. Right. They said they talked for five hours the first night and they just knew. Right. They got married after five weeks. Uh-huh. She has three kids with uh, – with um, Jim Edmonds. Jim Edmonds. Yeah. He left her for a girl that they had a threesome with. Right. So he's engaged to now his fourth or fifth wife. Okay. She And now this is her third husband. And it sounds to me from what I read in her statement, she is devastated and that he broke up with her. Wow. Yeah. Two months of marriage. I yeah. feel like, yeah. That's you now. Don't you think of all short. the of all the weddings for Joe Biden to yeah. attend? Right, and it's quite a coup to have the president of the United States, a I Secret know. Service, come. I was kind of surprised. Did he actually come or did his wife come? No, they went. Joe Biden. Yes. Did he know he was there? No, just <laughs> he thought he was in Russia meeting. Do you the imagine they had minister. to break the news to yeah. him? <laughs> Joe, you're at a wedding. What? No, they had to break the news from that the wedding ended. So I had Annie look up and I go, is her wedding as long as Kim's to Chris Humphreys? And she beat it by two days. So Oh, wow. When Kim announced her to, that she was breaking up with Chris it was 73 days. Yeah. When this broke, it was 75 days. Oh, well, I'm glad they beat that. I didn't realize that Chris Humphreys was that short. It was that short, huh? Yeah. And then, it, and then she said she's devastated, and her family has she and her kids have to, it, it, you know. It sounds like he it was his doing, and they have to recover from this, and you know they're they're devastated. And I'm like, okay, first of all, your kids are really little, right? Like literally, it's not like they knew him for ten years. I mean, they know him for a matter of months, yeah. And one day was just dress up cute and take some photos. They yeah. might have thought it was just, wow. you know, for an Instagram post, but. I mean, I feel bad for her. She's a yeah. nice person. But the thing is, she used to be on The Real Housewives of OC. So imagine had they kept her, we could have watched the Joe wedding Biden. with Joe Biden, yeah. the breakup, the courting, everything. That right. would have been more exciting than Sweet James. No kidding. I would like to see. Anyway, well, I hope she lands on her feet. How soon do you, do you think she'll marry Oh, I'm sure she'll have another person in a month. Well, she went on Instagram and she did The Real you know, broken out skin. Yeah. I'm losing my oh. hair from anxiety. I'm just really? letting you guys know this. So she went full no makeup? Full no makeup, like uh, I'm going through it. Yeah. I don't know if she's, I mean, I'm sure she's not happy. But... Now, I, I, every time a, a marriage ends that quickly, I'm always like, was, was, there had to be some signs that it, this wasn't going to work. You know, like, I don't th- to, like, I think what this... happens from the I do to two months later? What shows it's... Oh, I think the signs were after the I do. Yeah. Because otherwise, you, that's why you date someone for a couple of years. Right. And you get through a holiday and you get through something tragic yeah. or difficult. Because if it's all been bliss... Vacation. You got to go on a vacation. You got to go on a vacation. Yeah. See, because that's where things rear their head. And he was an attorney, but not a practicing one. So yeah. maybe when they got together and started to live together, it was like he really wasn't doing anything. I don't know. Yeah. You never know. All of a sudden, someone's like... What? Yeah. You know? Got to so, get stuck in traffic. That's a, that's one telltale sign. How do they handle traffic? How how do they handle traffic? And how do they handle like like a rage road? Or, yeah. A ra- yeah. Rage, <laughs> road rage. Road rage or yeah. someone like taking their parking spot. I, I think the, one time I dropped my keys. Yeah. You know, an elevator has a little area. Door opens. Yes. There's a little area. Yeah. And it could go no. down five floors. Drop my keys, getting out of the elevator. Where? Their old girlfriend's apartment, <sighs> and they fall down to wherever I don't abyss. Know, gone. Yeah. And I know I no, I didn't have another set of keys. I was like I had an expensive car. Those key, magnetic keys that cost yeah. five thousand dollars, whatever, to get them redone. And she was like laughing, like that I dropped the keys, and I oh I, that was one where I was just like. If this was a marriage, thank God it wasn't. This would I would have shown my true self, and it would have been over. I was furious. Furious that she's laughing. 
Yeah, and Fury. Yeah, everything about it was, you know, a, a normal person probably would have handled it like, oh, there goes my keys. I'll have to get new ones. But I was, yeah, so. Well, I'll tell you what happened to me this morning. <laughs> oh, okay. After 21 years of marriage. <laughs> we packed up all of our stuff uh-huh. from our Palm Desert home. And we were all so tired. Oh, you so guys just came back today? Came back yesterday. But wow. we're all so tired. We didn't unpack. And I yeah. knew I had to do this today. So I'm like, I'll do it tonight. And um, and Peter wanted to wear his new Lululemon pants for you. Okay? <laughs> That's nice of it. Yeah. And I didn't realize he had Lulu. I didn't realize. First of all, nothing against Peter. I didn't realize they made Lululemon pants for men. They absolutely do. Okay. They're like joggers. Yeah. I think they're pretty cute, yeah. to be honest. Okay. He's wearing them. Yeah, they are cute. So, um, so he, he can't find him. Yeah. Now he left a couple hours before me in another car. So he's like, um, you moved my stuff. Where's my Lululemon pants? Did you leave them at the house? And I go, no, but you did leave your swim trunks and I packed those. So I, well, let me see, you know, all the guy, all of them have dark clothes. So I'm like, let me look in Brandon's bag. Let me look. I look through all the bags. And then he's like, oh, they're here. In, in his bag. Yeah. Did you get an apology? Yeah. He, yeah. I go, hello? And he's like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, but it, you went right from blaming me right. to losing your pants. Yeah. You know? And I'm just like, all right. But these that's... are the things, these are the, the storms you have to weather in order to yeah. become a successful 21 year marriage, which Jim Edmonds and, uh, and let me Cuff tell you, Biden, is that his uh, name? A few years ago, I might not have acted so calmly and accepting of his weirdness. Why is that? A few years ago, what? Um, you were thinking about getting out <laughs> a few years ago. I think I it, it, like I would fight it, right? And now I just go, it's not worth my energy to fight it. I know I'm right and whatever, and just like let me just get through this. It's, I don't feel like um, defending my point of view of like don't you, blame me. I didn't take it. Like right. I just am like not that you would ever leave Peter, but do you ever think you get to the point? And I think a lot of people do. I think I I I do as. A, and so does my wife, probably. Yeah. Uh, I think we get to the point where it's like, well, I'm not going to leave now. Like, I don't want to be back on Bumbles and whatever. You know what I mean? Well, I had a very weird dream. I know dreams suck. No one wants to hear a repeated dream. Yeah. But, you know, I've always been thinking about big dying in the sex of the oh, city. Yeah. And I've always, you know, how people are like, why didn't she call 911, uh-huh. right? And I'm like, I wonder if there's ever been people that just are not happy with their spouse and they are kind of flailing, and they so, sort of wait a little bit longer. Oh, you mean like they're, they're having the heart attack and they don't call 911? Yes. Yeah. Are you saying that you might? So last I had a dream. If Peter fell down on the floor with Ennis Lululemon. <laughs> so I had a dream last night <laughs> that he was about to get on this bar stool and he was really drunk. I, I like it already. And I pushed him. <laughs> yeah. And he hit his head really hard, oh. and he wasn't moving. And the good news is, in the dream, I immediately tried to revive him and save him. But I was like, does he realize, now that he's going to come to, yeah. that I actually pushed him? Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, can I, this is a morbid question, but just for fun. Yes. Um, if he died... Yes. Say that happened. Yes. Hypothetically speaking, he fell. Yes. Who do you have a friend you could call to help you carry the body? Like get try I think and I get need rid about of it. four. <laughs> it's <laughs> a very heavy body. You're, saying, you gotta, you're gonna need a couple of people. Who would be your go to? Honestly, I, I don't have I, anybody. I just, I like nobody nobody would... would help me. Yeah. Nobody is going to jeopardize their life to be an accomplice. Uh-huh. Nobody. Really? Right. No. No. Yeah, I don't know if I have anybody like that either. No. I feel like I just watched something. Actually, maybe my with? sons. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. Well, they'd be like, we'll help you. <laughs> They're probably yeah. the only ones. Oh, my God. They um, could lift them. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah. All right. But um, it's but I thought you were going to say, do I have someone in mind I'd like to date? And when oh, I that's was, even better. When I was with... When I was with... Um, the boys, I, we were like leaving a, a coffee place like in Palm Desert. Yeah. And this guy's like, oh, I'd like to see you bring me coffee in the morning. And I was like, boys, did you see that? They didn't see it. And um, Wait a minute. He was working there? No, he's like leaving in his car or whatever. And he said, I'd like and, to and see. Yes. And so then I go, did you see that, Drake? That like, like old crusty man hit on me. Oh, you it know? was an old crusty man. And, and then, mm. 
But I go, but if something happened to dad, I'm like, I don't want another old no crusty man. And he goes, and besides, dad has a nicer car than that guy. I'm like, well, whatever. So I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm just, but when I, th- that's what happens. Yeah. When I see on occasion somebody else right. hit on me, which we do sort of see a little bit in Sex and City where the guy was like creepy at the open house. It oh, makes that me was, go, yeah. I just don't think there's like a ton of like great potential out there. Uh huh. So, no. Yeah, well, anyway. Anyway, ha- of, to, to, Megan Kian, King Edson is going to be back out there. To quickly yeah. go back to Sex yeah. in the City for a second. Obviously, there's going to be something with this handsome uh, I, podcast, uh, you know, podcast producer. producer. Yeah. Yes, which is so what, When's it going job. to happen? I mean, it, I feel like we need to move this thing along. Well, when she gets the hip replacement, she's hot for the, the hot um Oh, well, I didn't therapist. see this coming attraction. Where did you see that? It's at the very end of the episode. Oh, I, I, I watched I the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. They Absolutely. they didn't give it till after they like Willie Garson. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. Tribute. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Which, by the way, I have something sad to admit. Oh no. So when I did twenty five words or, or less with Willie. Oh, you did it with Willie. Yeah. Um, like most people, I thought he was gay. Yeah. So I started to talk to him and. You know, it wasn't he was acting not like his character, but I just assumed he was gay, right? Right. And then he said he had a son, which again doesn't mean gay. that you're yeah. not gay. And so I was like, "Yeah, you got to do, you got to do a juicy scoop." And well, this is like a year and a half ago, so before we know right. that the show's coming back. But just you know, and I'm like. And right away, it's like I don't want to talk about Sex and City. I want to talk about this other thing I'm doing. Oh yeah, I'm one of and those. then right. I realized in more conversation he was straight. Yeah, and I never pursued the interview. Oh no. Well, I mean, I think he did fine in life not being on it, but I was yeah. kind of like, but I literally yeah. was like, oh, if he doesn't want to talk about Sex and the City and he's not gay, yeah, I feel kind of bad about it. Well, you'll get over it. I mean, I yeah. I'm just saying, I feel mm-hmm. anyway. I'm just honest with you guys. What I, do you I want me to do? It. I appreciate I mean, it. Maybe that's weird that yeah. I was. Okay. No, it's, it was, it's, we appreciate that okay. type of Okay, let's honesty. talk about the latest with Brittany. Did you see this singing video that she did? Yeah, I did. And your thoughts? Well, I mean, come on now. You know, I, I know this audience is very ardent Britney Spears fans, but that singing was, it was, it was rough. It was hard to listen to. It was rough. Maybe it was the acoustics of the bathroom, it was, the marble. Uh, I don't know. Bouncing. I. It was not. A, it was not good. Here's what I think. I think Instagram is a very interesting thing, yeah. and she's getting a lot of attention and a lot of love and absolutely no negativity yeah. whatsoever, except on occasion when I have you on Juicy Scoop. No, I, that's not negative. I'm just. I'm saying just that. saying, and so. <laughs> I think she's just like, it doesn't matter what I do. Yeah. And I just feel like doing it, you know, unlike somebody that has a really curated Instagram or every photo is like, you know, done. She realizes like the more messed up her makeup is and the roots out and the weird stuff, right. it even gets more action. And she's, you know, been in the limelight since she was like 10 years old. I yeah. think she doesn't know any different. I agree. Uh, well, I'll tell you this. Did I tell you I met the uh, Free Britney movement? I met the, the people behind it? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, and? Uh, they're interesting people, nice people. You know, I met them. Do you uh, think they're going to move on to any other freeing anybody else? Amanda Bynes or anybody? Well, it is interesting to me. One of them made a speech. I, I yes. was writing for an award show. Yes. And they were receiving an award for whatever. I don't mm-hmm. know. Freeing Britney. Something like yes. that. Yes. And uh, they were all there, as 10 of them, whatever. You know, some of them freakish looking, some of them normal looking. Okay. And they seemed to be, they were, they were, uh, they, there was infighting amongst them. Wow. Amongst the Free Britney people. Because three of them got up on stage to accept the award. And one of them made the speech. You know, okay. Made, and then they said, okay, and cut. It was, it was not live. It was taped. And one woman goes, uh, now are we going to do that where all three of us get to speak? And they were like, oh, we didn't have that on the script. We, she, there was just going to be that person. And they're like, no, we all get to speak. So they had to redo it with all three of them got to speak. The heads So this of the wasn't Britney a Britney live Britney. event, but they no. put it together and they put it on what, YouTube? It's going to be on something. I think okay. it airs tonight or tomorrow. Or okay. Um, so, yeah. But there was some infighting. 
Then the one girl goes on to actually make a pretty good speech about uh, you know these these type of situations that Britney Spears was under. Yeah, and all the other people who are under them, not just Britney, uh, but famous people. You know, uh, Nichelle Nichols from Star Trek, the black oh. woman in Star Trek. Oh, wow. you know her. She, apparently, she's under one. She's much older. Yeah. So w- whether her mental right. capabilities are, and, and then uh, I guess Amanda Bynes right. is under one. So I thought uh, that was interesting. That I thought Britney was. I know she wasn't the only one, but I thought there was other. Well, stories. I mean, I think yes, if she can shed light on this thing that's just been going on, right? You know, like how other people shed light on, like you know, people that are conservative shit. Yes, right. and people that are like you know behind bar- literally behind bars for you yeah. know for crimes that, that that they should be let out. Like anything right. that's drawing attention to it's good. What do you re- do? We predict she's going to perform or do anything soon? No. I don't think she is. I really don't. And I'm, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I just don't think she's interested anymore. I think showbiz, she, you know, I don't think show business treated her well. And I, don't, I, think, and I she's think she's getting she's... enough creative love out of just doing Instagrams. Yeah. I mean, she hasn't utilized money on it, but she should. Listen, show business is a shitty business. It's a shitty business if you're 50. It's a shitty business if you're, especially when you're 10 years old. And I think if you've gone through what she's gone through, you don't want to be in it anymore. You're done. You see it with a lot of people. It's not the only one. Like a lot of people are like, I'm done with yeah. show business. You know? So yeah. I think she, there's no way. Why would she go back at this point? I don't think we she were, has to. You were talking about somebody that we used to work with in show business. Yes. And he was more like the behind the scenes person at Chelsea lately. Mm-hmm. And. We were always fascinated about what his real life was. Yeah, I did a show last night at the Improv. Yes, and uh, some people who had n- knew him asked me, you know, if I knew because mm-hmm. they knew I worked on Chelsea lately. So I said, "Do you know uh, this person?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm, I know him well. And we're good friends back in the Chelsea lately days." And they asked about his, in, you know, he has an interesting life. You know him, and you know his yes. life. He, and he's always with rich uh, men. See one now a lot, and he doesn't seem to be um, gay, right? And a lot of people, these people specifically, are asking me if they, if I knew anything, like if he, if are he they was a in couple? a romantic relationship, yeah, they're romantic. With this and guy. I said I don't know anything. I was curious, I, as curious as anyone. I was going to say I think there are wealthy people that have like paid companion kind of. Right, people that are that they're not sexually involved with, just friends. I think they're just like yeah, like and if they if they're a wealthy straight guy and they can choose oh you know a younger companion, right? I feel like black entertainers do a lot, and no one thinks no one thinks it's weird. Well, like like, like black a posse. entertainers will have a posse. Yeah, they'll have the trainer, the bodyguard, the this, the that. Right, you know, and every that's just their homeboys that they bring in with them. Right, but if a white guy doesn't really have the homeboys because their their homeboys are doing their own thing. Right. They have their own families. Mm-hmm. But now this guy's single and he has a lot of money and he doesn't want to be alone. So yeah. I'll put you on the payroll. You'll help book reservations. You will also kind of cute so you can bring some cute tail yeah. or pull some girls in. But also if I'm going to go to Europe and do something and I don't have a girlfriend I want to be with, I don't want to, you know, yeah. I still have a guy that like, I enjoy. Okay. But maybe we're not boning. That could I I believe that's the case in this yeah. situation because I don't think he's a gay guy, but I don't know. It's they take some pictures that look you know, they're always in robes. Well, nothing would make me happier if this particular person was yeah. gay. Right. And like and hooked up with someone super rich. Right. And is living the high life. Yeah. Well, he is living the high life. I know. I see him on private jets and slippers. Oh well, geez. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, but I think there's, I think there's women that. I mean, I think there's rich women that pay for friends, right? You know, to an extent, you know, and then or pay for them to be on trips, or I mean, you get to a certain level and you want someone to come with you, and they are not at your level to pay their part. Then, then you absolutely can. Treat Do you think people. you'd be a good hired friend? No, but I'm down to hire some friends. Oh, you are. Yes. Really. Yeah. Like who? Like what type of friend? Well, right now I think- Can I, I get a couple of bucks out of this? <laughs> I'm saying in treating treating people on a trip, if you're at that level, of, but, but this is more than treating someone on a trip. Okay. This is like treating their whole lifestyle. Yeah. So I would hope that I would never have to do that, but like, 
I could see being like, yeah, you know, I've got this place in Malibu. I'm a widow. Right. My kids are grown. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't want to be alone. You know, and you're a fun girl, and like, let's go hang. I don't know. Right. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, think you might I be I don't want to go down on you, but I yeah. also don't need some guy around that I don't trust. So right. maybe I just like to have a heterosexual girlfriend with me. Yeah. That is down to do the stuff I want to do. Okay. I'm all, so we'll see. You might be right about that. Real House of Salt Lake City. I want to tell you something. <clears throat> okay. I just took a grab of this photo. <laughs> this is <laughs> Mary. And she is the one who is a cult leader. Oh. And she is so bizarre and odd. And at one moment, she said to the girl who's been arrested, Jen Shaw, for fraud, she said, I pray every day that you're guilty. I mean, that you're innocent. Oh. Like, she is the, it is the craziest, weirdest show I've ever seen. And then I just, this is coming up next week. I just took a photo of this girl's outfit. And just, I just wanted you to see it. Yeah. It looks like Elton John. Right. Ada Flamingo. Yeah. Like, what yeah. is this? It looks like a flamingo. Yeah, a flamingo is attacked and it's walking away from the attack. All these shows are just like about such weird outfits. Can I say? Yes. Sorry. Go ahead. You go to no, no, I want to. I, I meant wanna... to mention one other thing to you. Yes. And I'm going to go back to Sex and the City and Please I apologize. Please do. Because it's fresh in my mind from watching it last Please night. Please do. And it's something that bothers yes. me a lot. And I believe it happens in these shows yes. that you're showing, these, these uh, Real Housewives shows. Yeah. And you'll. Please watch Sex and the City again, and you'll agree with me. And just like that, or Sex and the City? And just like that. Okay. The extras are all very bad. They're all acting You're always obsessed way... with extras. I know, but I, I don't know why. They're, I'm obsessed with these ones. You have to watch again. Okay. They're, they're all really overacting. Well, I think they're probably so excited I, to be an extra on Sex and the City. There are several scenes that they're actually... Um, uh, getting in the way of the of of the action several oh, times. Oh, by the way, the girl that wrote the article and shared about how she was a stand-in for Kristen yeah. Davis and that she didn't like Chris Noth's behavior around mm -hmm. her. Yeah, she also write wrote when I heard the show was coming back, I reached out yeah. and wrote an email and said I'd love to be the stand-in again. I'll even do PA and extra work, but right. I never heard back. You think? Yeah. Right. She wrote the article, like, I mean, she shared she shared her disdain for it, like, a couple years ago. Right. And then, yeah. And then, and then it comes out, and she's, like, wondering why they're not, like, oh, you know what? Let's definitely have yeah. her back for a part that is not that, no offense, mm -hmm. but a stand-in is a I mean, right. you can find people that are Kristen Davis height and yeah. colored hair, but okay. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, I thought that was weird. Um, okay. I need to talk to you about Sister Wives. Okay. You do not need to watch this show to understand what I'm going to say. I mean, I know it, but I don't know it. Cody, this is filmed before the vaccine. Uh-huh. It's been seven months since the lockdown. And he's such a freak about the COVID rules that he really is only living with Robin, wife number four, because she follows the rules. The other three women are feeling like, okay, we're, we never see you. We don't. This one on the end, Janelle, I think she actually misses him, and I think that she misses boning with him. Yeah, because he's like, maybe they'd be nicer if I was intimate with them. Anyway, this one, Mary, he wants nothing to do with, and she's been home for seven months, following the COVID rules. Yeah. But nobody bothered to see her because she only has one daughter who's a lesbian and getting married. Yeah. So she's alone in her house and they meet about how can we get on the same page about rules so that we can maybe have Thanksgiving together. And then Mary goes, well, I've been doing these rules for seven months and I'm all by myself. And they're like, oh, you have? Like nobody wants to see her. And um, anyway, Cody's the worst person on earth and – like, these are his rules. And the rules include, like, wiping down the mail and stuff. Oh, because of COVID. Yeah. Taking off all your clothes on the porch. Oh. And right. your shoes. Yeah. And immediately showering once you've gone Remember to the store. Remember those days early on in COVID? We were, I never yeah. did that, but yeah, I never okay. Did it either, but. And they're like, so the women are just like, you know what? Why don't we just, like, not meet? And he was just like, oh. And he's just so awful. And, um, and then he's really angry. He's like, I will never be run by a wife. Anyway, my prediction is 
all the wives are going to leave, but um, Robin, the, this this one in the brunette, because she's oh. putting up with it. It's just a very – it's very – now, what do you think is going on in this photo? I just want you to guess. Uh, they're making a cake of some sort. It looked at baking. Who do you think they are? <laughs> they're some sort of sister wives, right? <laughs> No? No. Who are they? This is one of the one of the women's daughter. Okay. And her husband. Oh. Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. What I yeah, okay. I see it now. And they do this gender reveal. Oh. Which I really can't believe. <laughs> whose, whose gender are they revealing? <laughs> Because I need to gender reveal on everybody in this picture. I know. <laughs> and they do a gender reveal and they're like, this is elephant foam or something. I don't know yeah. what they call it. And if it comes out pink, then it's a girl. Blue. Anyway, it came out yellow, which I thought was very telling <laughs> right. in this whole situation. Yeah. And um, and then they're like, oh, it's a girl. And everyone's like, whoa, this is so great. And um, <laughs> I just like... Look at the background. Like, look at their just backyard. Like, like they're in a junk just like junk <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. I'm like, I know it's TLC, but you guys have been on the show for like 15 yeah. years. Like, is there really? And I um, feel like the trampoline is something you sh- you should not commit. Just go. The, the, <laughs> your kids are going to be into trampolines for like a, a six months. Go to like a trampoline park. Don't get the trampoline in your yard. It's something that's gonna. You're not. It's not going to end well. We got a trampoline, a hand me down from Chris Jenner. Oh, Kylie, and we're and done with. Oh, Kendall that's a, used to well, jump that's on a it. good one. And we put it with the it had the thing around it, so it's safe. This one yeah. is not safe. And um, built it like put it kind of below in the corner of our yard. Yeah, and it was a huge hit for so many years. Oh, really? So many kids came and like it was because it was a Jenner. No, it was just, just a nice yeah. trampoline. Kids just like it. Okay, I'm just saying. But, but it when it's out in a field it. like that, yeah, and then people are wearing these Hot type of clothes. <laughs> but I just want to say, like for these younger genera- for the younger generation. I mean, I just can't believe people still do gender reveals. I mean, isn't that kind of politically incorrect? Yeah. It's like you always say about reality shows, though. They have to find something. They got to get something that's entertaining. Remember you say it was a pole dancing class. Yes. First couple of years of reality TV. And then now I believe gender reveal is another one that always gets production value. Right. But I also see them all on like Facebook and TikTok and all that stuff, too. Yeah, they were like five. People were dying. Uh They were burning down entire states. And I don't know. I don't even understand how it works. Don't you know the gender of your baby? Like the if you go with your wife to the to the yeah, but you're you're doing a party so everyone ha- else gets excited about it. Who gives a shit? I went to one. Really? Who? It's got to be somebody famous. No, it was just like Peter's cousin, but it was oh. fun to know. Really? But okay. it was a COVID party, and it was it was one of those sad where they like wrapped up each you know carrot stick and like a bunch of saran wrap and it was just like <laughs> oh, trying boy. to be all good and, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is real fun is it gonna is it still going so let's talk about our goals and resolutions oh. do you have any chris the fans want to know how do you feel looking back and what are you looking forward to uh you know i i've 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 don't really have any i mean i've made them before <laughs> The weird thing is I have – and they never came true, none of them. And my life is done – I've done well with no plan. So I choose not to make one. This is what I think. Okay. <laughs> with the Omicron, uh-huh. I just think people need to know that this just obviously may never go away. I know. So that's why, why – So plan- it's like it just – I mean, who saw this coming? I mean, it just it matters like how much – who's going to cancel, who's not. Yeah. What's going to – so until it's good for like a solid year of everything being backed and I will not, I don't just don't think I'll ever like Right. So you make your plan knowing that the plan could be canceled. Uh-huh. And, and in some, some cases hoping the plan could be can- like it's it's been a good excuse. I mean, there is this little kind of thing like, oh, this could get to a point of things getting canceled again. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll admit, I had some Christmas stuff canceled, and it was a pleasure. (laughs) I'm so glad it was some of it was canceled. 
I mean, when I look back at like what a Christmas was for me, yeah, with little kids and elderly parents, right, getting all the presents, getting them in their Christmas, getting make sure everyone had Christmas outfits, going to church, yeah, then going to the Jenner Christmas party, then waking up, then going to bed, then putting out all the presents, waking up the next morning, filming it all. Then having to post for my job that, hey, I was at this party. Yeah. You know, all the good photos, posting all day long on Christmas. Then that night, having my parents come and making sure that, like, my dad's in a wheelchair, that he can. And this Christmas was so incredible. This by far was the best Christmas I've ever really? had in my entire life. That th- you were no at presents. Home. No presents. Nobody wants anything. Uh, I know. I'm- and it's like, I didn't. I don't even try. Yeah. I like. I mean, I got my sister some stuff just because I have, you know, whatever stuff. Right. And I said, don't worry about getting my kids anything. We didn't do any, and you know, spent the Christmas money on getting a place and having a vacation. I wrapped for ten minutes total. Yeah. And it was just great. Great. We didn't go to church. No junk. I, you know, a lot of times you just people get junk. I know. Because I used to also be, as they got older, I was like, I want them to have something to play with that day and open that day. Yeah. And then I'd get, you know, they wouldn't like it or, you know, they come, can you return? And so what I, the last couple of years we've gone away. Right. And by going away, you really can get out of not having presents. Yeah. Because you're like, we can't, can't take, can't, take, we take can't take many things or I can only take little things. Yeah. And I just, I'm just telling you people, don't be sad when your kids get older. It is so much easier. <laughs> okay. Good to know. I like enjoy the cuteness. Yeah. But just know that it is such a more exhausting time than when, once they're older. Like I, I was just great. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm excited to hear that. So what are your goals, goals. and resolutions for 2022? What would you gonna... like to happen to Juicy Scoop? You want to become a, I mean, it's, it's a big success. You want it to become a bigger success? My goals are to have more fun, do more like just fun trips, which mm-hmm. I would share about, you know. Um, and uh, this is a hard one, but I'd like to drink a little less. Really? Yes. <laughs> wow. That's a. I don't know how long. I'm right now, I'm 24 hours sober. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't drank since Saturday night and it's oh, Monday. Okay. Well, that's so nice. I didn't drink yesterday. That's not bad. Um, that's a start. You got to start somewhere. Uh, now, do you feel? Why do you feel you drink it too much? How much? I just think I. I but just, it's the holidays. Is because of that? I or? just think it's like wasted calories, and that I should make it more on an occasion, and not just like an every night thing. But then there's a part of me that's like, you've worked hard, and you can afford this glass of wine, so why don't you just have it? Right. But I think that if I make more of an effort, I will actually have better sleep. Hmm. And so I, I'm not doing sober January. I never want to do that because there might be an occasion where I'm like at a wine pairing and I'm not going to give up the wine pairing. So I yeah. don't want to say sober October. Right. But I want to say like if it's not a big night or right. if I'm just as happy with an iced tea like at a thing, why not just have that? Yeah. Just get to that place. Okay. I think I've indulged a little too much unnecessarily. Okay. You think just like celebrating – for just, no reason. Yeah. Like just drink, you know, or even like, you know, I just watch. But if you're like sitting at the house watching TV, you have wine? Um, Sometimes and sometimes I don't. But yeah. I'm saying let's get rid of the th- when there was really no occasion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You that's, know? Yeah. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. And I remember this, this girl said, "I now I only, I don't drink alone. Mm-hmm. And I don't. I don't drink if if we're not celebrating right. something of some sort. Now yeah. that's a little much. Go yeah, there's not going to be a lot of celebration. But that's my thing, and so, and you have none. Okay, that's well, great. I just you know, I mean, of course, I have. I would like to be more. I'd like everything to be more successful. I'm go- doing good, but I want yeah. it to be better. Yeah, you know, I would like my podcast to be your podcast, and your oh. podcast to fail miserably. No. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Like I, I want everything to be better yeah Mm. i did get one person that uh wrote me like um this was the first time i listened to chris's first on a thursday over yours because they didn't like my i know interview with my cop i'm like oh i read a couple cop things oh god then just move on don't they don't like but i I also got a ton of love for it well good and i preferenced it by saying this is not my usual interview right 
I don't. I, it's the holidays. I'm. The, I have to I say, got, I, for the people that hated it, just know that you you, you screwed up my Christmas Eve. Well, also, so, I did I'll not say enjoy this. reading those mean things on Christmas yeah. Eve. It was bumming me out, you or the twenty third, or whenever that. I don't was. enjoy some of the things. Uh, now I listen, my people. <laughs> They love me, and they don't write mad. Me. The only yeah. time I get bad things written about me is when I do Juicy Scoop, and I know they're coming for this episode and for my jacket and for whatever the fuck else. You know, <laughs> I mean, I had one person write, you and I in front of the Christmas tree, the nice, yeah. yes. nice TMZ celebrity yeah. Christmas tree picture. Somebody writes, oh, all this guy needs is a goatee, and he's got every 50-year-old man outfit on. And- and then somebody writes underneath, I came here to write the same thing. I'm like, oh, two bitches. <laughs> you know, and I, it's only, it's your people. Your people are, they come at me. But it's such a small percentage. The most of them of are so, yeah, so yeah. sweet. Right. Um, someone wanted me to say what my resolution would be as Ramona Singer. Okay. And I would say, you know what? It's, I'm going to tell you right now. I've got my real estate license. I'm pretty excited about it. I hope to like do a new venture. I hope to make some new friends, some friends of color. Um, I would like some more diverse friends. And I think I have a really open heart. And I think that's why i the best person I know. And I'm really looking forward to the new year. You know, it's funny that I've been hearing you do this impression for a long time now. And I don't. I've never really heard her speak. And oh, I recently wa- sounds like it. Yeah. I know. I recently watched an episode and heard her speak and it I was like, Wow. I cannot believe how dead on that is. Thank you. Yeah. How sweet. Mm-hmm. This also was a juicy scooper. Tell us your favorite and least favorite venue to tour. Or is there one that you are okay saying that you wouldn't want to come back? Or you could talk about it and not say their name. In I case love you still want to Chicago. Get I just did Zanies in Chicago. And I have to say, like, as I was on stage, I was saying to myself, like, th- it could end now. Like, at, your the, whole the, life or your no, career? No, no, like, like stand up oh. comedy for me. It was so packed. It was the energy was great. It was Christmas time in Chicago. Uh, it was before Omicron. I, just right before Omicron. Well, and, and, the and we were just having a life. great time. And I was just like, this could, it could all end. I could be done with stand up right yes. after this. Um, so, yeah, I love Chicago, Chicago's Annie's, but I love a lot of clubs. The ones I hate are just the ones that, you know, inside comedy stuff, in a way, you know, they don't know, they don't pick you up from the airport. They don't know you're there. They don't I don't know, know that who we ever are. talked about this because I meant to. But when you're with me, I'm just going to say one of the cities, I'm not going to say which one. Mm-hmm. So. One of them, it was, you know, four sold out shows and we were, you know, having fun. And that day I, I was reaching out to the contact about take this person off the VIP list, put this person on of people changing their stuff, you know, which, by the way, guys, I do that. OK, I don't have someone else doing it. Right. And so um, and I'm waiting for my Uber to come because they don't provide a car, which is fine. That's the way my deals are. The Uber kept not coming, not coming. I'm like talking to the guy, can't understand him. And, you know, I jump in like a smelly cab. Right. And the smelly cab drops me off like far away because it was like some weird thing. So now I'm walking alone. Yeah. And I'm texting the girl. I'm coming around the backside. Can you let me in the green door? Like, you know, whatever, the green room door. Nobody there, nobody there. No one's answering. Finally, I'm just like walk up to the guy in front of the fans, hoping that people just don't see me because I just, you know, I'm going to see them after the show, you know? And I'm like, hi, I'm Heather McDonald. And he's, I'm like, I'm performing. And he's like, I need to see your Vax card. Yeah, yeah. I've... And I'm like, I, I, I performed here last night. I've been vaccinated. Yeah. Like, I just, can you just get me to the green room, please? And so he's like, oh, all right. So then he starts walking me through. And he's walking, going to walk me through the entire packed yeah. thing. So then I just ran away from him and went backside, then ran p- through the stage. And then I see this other girl, not the one. And I'm like, where was whatever the girl is? And she goes, oh, she called in sick at two. Yeah. And uh, I know. So I was kind of in a bitchy mood. And then the, you know, I said, oh, really? I'm like, so if there was a, a band of 10 people today performing, right. nobody would have told one person in the band that their right. contact was sick yeah, at two. They wouldn't be standing outside the front door trying to get Yeah. In. But it was the, the one lone female comic. Yeah. She's fine, you know. Like I, know. I So anyway, what was nice about you? Is I, is what, I wasn't thrilled. I was a little bitchy. Yeah. And I the girl came back and I said, "Listen, I'm sorry the vibe was off. This is why please don't do a TikTok about me." 
I mean, I'm just straight up. Oh, yeah, they're doing TikToks now about who tips well, who doesn't tip well. Yeah, who was a bitchy one. And I go, please, like, I apologize. It's absolutely not your fault. Yeah. And she's like, no, 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 you know, we're sorry. I go, it's not your fault. It was a person above her, you know. I go, but I'm sorry. I was just, like, frazzled. I, like, was running in a cab. I'm about to do, you know, an hour and a half show in 20 minutes. Like, I mean, I just... I just don't feel very special, you know? And so you came in and you're like, and I go, oh, God, I hope I don't get a mean TikTok about this or a podcast or something. And you're like, well, is everybody thrilled every day that they walk into their office? And yeah. I was like, oh, my God, you're right. <laughs> no. Yeah, most people. Like, you're right. <laughs> like, oh, my God. But I'm so scared yeah. now. And know. Especially TikTok Day does a whole thing where they say – you know, who's uh, everything. Awful. Oh, I know. Yeah. And when we were at the, the restaurant, out at a restaurant, um, there was this big mix up about ordering this this item right. for Drake. And I thought he was talking about something else. And I told, and he was like coming and humming. And I'm like, just get one as a starter. Just get one as a starter. I thought they were these little meatballs. Somehow, I guess he was pointing at a steak. So all of a sudden, the steak comes as a starter right. to share for the table. And he's like, no, this isn't even the steak I wanted. So anyway. It was awkward and weird, and she takes it away. Now it's my fault because I ordered for him. Yeah, I shouldn't order for him. He doesn't want the steak. To... So the check comes, and steak is on there. Wow. Oh. And I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. You know, like it's this restaurant, and I don't want this girl to have to pay for the steak. <laughs> right. And everything. Anyway, then she came back. She's like, oh, wait, let me take off oh, okay. the steak. Yeah. And I go, oh, okay. Thank-. And she's like, and we're such big fans. So oh, I'm like, you you know, imagine been. if I was like, but also I knew it was a miscommunication. But I was just afraid right. that like, haven't they done that to waiters? Like take money out of their pay? Like you never know. Yeah, it sometimes, sometimes can happen. Independently owned restaurant. Yeah. Like yeah. so. But anyway. Well, as a guy who's a. Uh, been on Dumois quite a bit. I'm a bit yes. of a, bit of a um, you know, what I'm like Pete Davidson now. You know, they just follow me around and see if I have a freak out. Yes, uh, that could have been something that was Im- immediately put on. Du- is it pronounced Dumois? Dumois. 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 I know, and you were on there. And yeah, in Chicago. In Chicago, but is there some truth that we don't know about? That no, you'd like to well, share on no, Juicy no, Scoop? no, no. Because so um, I'll say for everybody, the photo was him. At a restaurant bar by himself looking sad. Yeah. And the thing said Chris Frangiola was just spotted at this bar in Chicago having, having a freak it. out yeah. because someone um, mistook him for a local weatherman. Which was a story that I told. Yeah. yeah. There's some – that's a story, another story where someone thought I was a weatherman and I was, was, in, a, I was in a true fist fight in a bar and someone said – Yes. Who got into a fight? Someone said, I don't know. I think some weatherman. Yeah. That had nothing to do with it. no. With that, it was some girl being funny. She took yeah. a picture of me, and I and and then I went back to the bar to get a drink. Shit, I just sent your picture to Dumois and said you were having a freak out. I wasn't having a freak out, and I wasn't even sitting alone. There was another comedian there. He just got up at that point and whatever. Well, then I took it, yeah, because I had to be thirsty and make it about no, me. It was great, and I said, oh, and I did a. I did a story on it, and yeah. I said I'm gonna I'm gonna get the juicy scoop behind it. Right, and Dumois reposted that. I know. Yeah, and then I posted something else. Oh, uh, we're on TMZ. Yeah, for Christmas trees or whatever. So, and I post that, and Dumois wrote me on Instagram and 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 did like a laughing faces uh, on that. So they're Dumois huge fans. Huge fan. Great sense of humor. <laughs> great sense of humor. Yeah, and I wish they would follow me on more. I really do. I want people to take pictures of me everywhere and say I'm freaking out. You know, I don't go many places. So if you see me in Home Depot, say that I'm freaking out. And if I truly am freaking out, can you guys just know that... Um, it's a lot. I always say I this. I really try not to yeah. on occasion. Yeah. Every, who doesn't? I mean, you're not going to be the one they have to duct tape to a seat Never on an ever. airline. But if I'm a little like... or like. Okay, I'll tell you something. I wasn't great to my son at the van store. (laughs) Recently? Recently. Yeah. Because, listen, I know this is weird for people, but my kids don't ever want anything. Right. But they're, like, tall and cute, and they they could be cuter. Right. If they let me fucking dress them. Yeah. So I'm like... And Brandon, like, doesn't tell me that, like, his shoes are basically, like, falling apart. Oh, yeah. I'm like, it's time for new shoes, loser. Like, come on. Yeah. So we go to the van store... 
And he's like, I don't know. I go, listen, get both, okay? Because this isn't fun taking you. I'd like to get yeah. both, both. And he's like, okay, I just, I don't know. I'm like, could you put your foot fully in the shoe and make sure? And he's like, God, you're being so mean. And I'm like, seeing these other people, I'm like, I am being kind of mean. So if you're in the van store in Century City, don't do TikTok about how I mean. I made up with my son, but I was just like, like yeah. literally, they just they're not great shoppers, you know. And it's just like, but I gotta have like a collared shirt to go out to dinner. Like you gotta like come on. I wish <laughs> there was TikTok when I was like waiting tables because I waited on like every celebrity and most. I mean, the biggest nightmare was Diane Cannon. I think she's since passed. Very the be- Laker girl, the, no, the woman that, that was, was always at the Laker game, right with the long blonde Diane, curly hair. That's Diane Cannon. Can you right? I'm wrong. Diane Carroll, be- very oh. beautiful black with Sean Dynasty. Oh she was yes, a, very okay. famous. And God, she was the like <laughs> so mean. Like people would quit. What after would she they say to them? The I just the most god awful things. People would like I come back to the table crying and quit. Like, I can't go back to that tape. <laughs> I had to take care of her because she hated me so much. Okay, give me an example. So I'm coming over. I'm d- delivering a steak. One hey. time, yeah, she ordered a – she said she wanted a white Cabernet. I know. There's no such thing. Yeah. So I said, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think there's a white Cabernet. There is. Trust me. I've been all over the world. There is a white Cabernet, she <laughs> said. I know. I got to be honest with you. I don't think there is. But I'll check. Let me go check for white Cabernet. <laughs> so I go to the back, you know, talk to some sommelier. Or, is there a white Cabernet? No, the fuck a white Cabernet. Uh, <laughs> so I go back. Miss? Diane Carroll? No, no white Cabernet. And she's screaming, get my white Cabernet. <laughs> and I, I, we eventually just gave her a Cabernet. And she's like, well, thank you. That was a, that was red? Yes. Or Oh, I would have just gone with yeah. like a white wine yeah but and said whatever. it was a white cabernet I, mean, I remember the screaming and then it was david carity remember him yeah people would recognize him at the bar yeah i'll just got uh, these are my two if i had to tick tock about it <laughs> and he they would say i'm gonna buy you a drink because he's kung fu and whatever yeah kill bill and he would always order no matter who they were he was oh well, you could buy yeah you could buy me a drink and he would order johnny walker blue which is like the most expensive drink you could order how much is it 175 dollars a one. shot a shot the shot, and he would have no problem with it. And people would be like, "Oh, okay," and one hundred and seventy-five dollars, and they'd pay it, and he'd sit there drinking it. Then he'd say, "They'd be like, don't don't offer me a drink then if you don't want me to order the most expensive." And he always ordered the most expensive. Do you know that? I've that, seen it. I've seen him do it like six times. That's so funny because when we were at that restaurant, that's what Drake noticed that they had that. Yeah. They, and he's like, they're like both he and McKinsey are like a shot is one hundred and seventy-five dollars. Yeah, in some cases, like two hundred and twenty. Yeah. Yeah, and John David Carradine would always order it. That was those wow. Men, yeah, he's is he alive anymore? No, he's dead. Remember, he hung himself. Oh, by, by yeah, accident. Yeah, well, so they say by a yeah, sexual yeah, thing. Yeah, so that yeah. Some people say it was a you know autoerotic asphyxiation deal. Mm, nice. Yeah. Well, rest in peace. At least he got those expensive. That this prior. is this is during the you know the much much less politically correct times that we live in now. After he died. Uh, hung himself accidentally or purposely, whatever. The New York Post headline was the next day was Hung Fu. <laughs> That's how t- the times were different because he he played Kung Fu and that was the headline, <laughs> Hung Fu. <laughs> Could you imagine? The New York Post? The New York Post headline <laughs> was Hung Fu. Big letters, Hung Fu. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> On that note, yeah. Chris... Uh, everybody, um, follow Chris Frangiola. Chris Frangiola. Listen to Cover to Cover. Cover to Go to his shows. Yeah. And uh, he's got New January York. in New York. F- and February in, uh, in, in Tacoma, Washington. I'll be at the Tempe Improv February 5th and 6th. Of course, you can find everything at heathermcdonald.net. City Winery, January 8th, New York City. See you there. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year.